you're going fishing for prolonged periods or out beyond the reef, then you don't want to be in the water all the time. Somewhere in this tree, there's a canoe. And the guys here reckon they can carve it out in just one day. The guys are doing as much rough shaping here as they can. That way the log will be much lighter to carry back to where they're going to hollow it out. In Samoan culture, every big project has an overseer whose job it is to watch and not join in, but advise where necessary. And now the guys are marking out the sides using the old carpenter's trick of a chalk or soot line. The canoe is light enough to pick up now and the fine carving can be done at the beach. It amazes me how hard they're hitting the wood this close to completing the canoe. That's the confidence that comes with years of practice. They tap the wood to find out how thick it is and whether more needs shaving off. And here's that sinnet string, but they'll need more than that to finish the canoe. These are the coconut fibres that were soaked. Now they're ready for braiding up into a cord. First of all, you pull out a few of the fibres to form into a strand. One fibre is wrapped around the others so that it all holds together. and then you plait it together. I'm told some of the most productive sinnet weaving happens during the longer and more laborious village meetings. It's used to tie on the outrigger, which gives the narrow canoe stability. The Samoans prefer sinnet rope to nails because it gives with the force of the waves. This puts less strain on the canoe so the outrigger is less likely to break up in heavy seas. It felt a bit precarious, but then this boat was a tree this morning. It needs to be dried out for a couple of weeks in the sun, to lose the water in the wood. Then it'll float better. But still, it was astonishingly stable. <laughs> 